Hi everyone, it's Rebecca from the Sugar Plum Sleep Company and I'm thrilled to be working with Thinking Outside the Sandbox to bring you some sleep advice for yourself and your children. There's something special talk to you a little bit about room conditions and how dark a space is and how that can be a really important factor in creating good nighttime and good daytime sleep for your child and for yourself as well. There are a few things that you can do to evaluate your room conditions to try to optimize it for sleep. And the reason for this is that our bodies um, adapt to uh, changes in light and release different hormones based on light levels that help us either stay awake or fall asleep. And so as the amount of light decreases, our body releases melatonin, which helps us uh, prepare for sleep and helps us to maintain a sleep state. So that's why it's really important to take a look at the sleep space and ensure that it's dark so that uh, you can promote the release of melatonin. On a scale from 1 to 10, I recommend that a room be about an 8.5 to 9. You certainly don't want it to be a bat cave. We don't want it to be so dark that you can't see the hand in front of your face. But we want it to be a fairly dark environment. And that's particularly important for this time of year when the sun is staying out uh, a lot later and also starting to rise a lot earlier and if your child is going to bed in between the you know seven to eight o'clock hour there's still quite a bit of light out and so what we want to do is create a space that mimics a, a more nighttime condition for them so I encourage people to take a look at the window coverings that they do have. Sometimes people don't have uh, much in the way of window coverings. Something that's really thin and lets a lot of light through is probably not the best option. I understand that window coverings can be a significant uh, investment. So what I would encourage you to do just to see whether or not light does make a difference in how your child sleeps or how you sleep is to look at covering the window with other things that you may have in the house like an extra blanket or dark towels. Uh, the other thing that you can do that I find works really well is black bristol board. And so while it may not look that great, it's actually a really fantastic way to block out light. The other thing that you can do to maximize that is to find some black masking tape because that is on the market. You just have to hit up one of your local craft supply stores and you'll be surprised at some of the, the interesting products that you might be able to find there. And it's also a really cost effective way to see whether or not the reduction in light levels can help. And if you do find that that is, is helping either uh, yourself or your child, then that's when you can look at perhaps investing in some more long-term solutions for the space. Uh, the other thing that you can do is to line existing drapes that you may have in place. There's lots of light blocking fabrics that are available on the market that you can add to the uh, draperies that you have now. And I would also encourage you to take a look at the sizing of your drapes and how they are positioned in terms of where your curtain rod is. Oftentimes there's a lot of light that leaks through the top of a window covering. And if you were to just reposition the hardware a little bit so that it hangs higher above the window, or if the space allows it to actually hang that hardware from the ceiling, then that can be a really nice option as well to, to block out some additional light. The other thing that's important to do is actually take a look at artificial light sources as well, which uh, we may you know, not notice a whole lot, but they can have some impact as well on how well we're able to fall asleep and to maintain a sleep state. So things like alarm clocks, um, maybe even you, a fan that has an indicator light on it could, could be quite bright. Baby monitors as well have a, a significant light source on them sometimes. Times. So take stock of what's in the room, either uh, reduce the light by dimming it a bit, remove it if it's an, uh, an item that's unnecessary, or you can even look at trying to cover up the light source with uh, some masking tape, uh, band-aids work in a pinch as well. 
if you don't have anything else on hand. So that's a, a couple of first steps that I would encourage you to do. I look forward to the next installment of Thinking Outside the Sandbox uh, video series and I hope to hear um, some feedback from you to see whether or not some of these uh, tips have helped out with your sleep or with your child's sleep. Take care.